Hi, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. Please review today's news segments, and then we'll get started. This is VOA News. I'm Marissa Melton. The heads of NATO and the European Commission flew to a North Sea platform on Friday to discuss the protection of infrastructure and gas supplies to Europe. Rachel Graham of Reuters has more. After a drop in Russian flows since its invasion of Ukraine, Norway became the largest gas supplier to the EU. Atop the trolley platform, which extracts gas from Norway's biggest gas field, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg spoke of keeping prices stable. Gas installations like the troll platform is uh, vital for our economies, for our industries, but also therefore for our security. Because we have seen how President Putin has uh, tried to use energy as a weapon throughout uh, the war uh, against uh, Ukraine. Security at Norwegian petroleum installations was increased after the explosions on the Nord Stream pipelines on September 26th in the Baltic Sea. That's Reuters' Rachel Graham reporting. Chinese President Xi Jinping will visit Russia on Monday, according to officials from both countries, weighing into the Ukraine conflict just as relations between Moscow and Washington hit a new low. Both governments have announced that Chinese President Xi's much-anticipated trip to Russia to visit President Vladimir Putin uh, could come as early as Monday. The Kremlin says important bilateral documents will be signed. It did not elaborate. Ukraine's allies in the U.S. and Europe have said they are concerned that China may start sending weapons to Russia that would be used in the war. In Ukraine, Xi's government has denied having any such plan while criticizing Western aim arms shipments to Ukraine's military. Slovakia on Friday approved a plan to provide Ukraine with MiG fighter jets. Slovakia is the second NATO country following Poland that has answered President Vol Volodymyr Zelensky's call for fighter aircraft. This is VOA News. More than 400 people have been killed in one of Africa's deadliest tropical cyclones, Cyclone Freddy. In recent years, Reuters' David Doyle reports on the damage Freddy did to a village in Malawi. Homes in Tauchira were swept away on a tide of water and mud. Residents say 32 people died and 18 are still missing. The death toll across Malawi, Mozambique and Madagascar since Freddy first made landfall in February continues to rise. Over 400 people are now confirmed killed. That's after one of Africa's deadliest tropical cyclones in recent years circled back to hit the region for a second time at the weekend. Reuters' David Doyle reporting. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted the, uh, hosted the I Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar on Friday. It's part of the longstanding White House tradition of St. Patrick's Day celebrations of Irish culture in the United States. Biden referenced his own Irish heritage in his remarks, saying it's a big day in his own family's household. He said Irish Ireland and the United States share great friendship and long traditions. Varadkar says he's looking forward to hosting Biden in Ireland. I promise you that we're going to roll out the red carpet and it's going to be a visit like no other. Um, everyone's excited about it already. Varadkar also thanked Biden for his support and understanding for Ireland's position on Brexit during negotiations on the United Kingdom's withdrawal from the European Union. Known as Brexit, the Irish government planned to retain a push to retain an open border between itself and Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK. One of the top priorities for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security this year is to add more companies to a sanctions list for using forced labor in China's Xinjiang region. This according to a senior DHS official on Friday, Robert Silvers, the Undersecretary for Strategy at the Department of Homeland Security, uh, said another priority this year was to work to persuade like-minded countries in Europe, as well as Japan, Australia, India and others, to pursue enforcement regimes similar to the United States. The department was assigned by the U.S. Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act to create a sanctions list for companies known to traffic in forced labor. Two Hong Kong men have been arrested by National Security Police for merely possessing what the authorities say are seditious children's books. It's the latest in a group of arrests over the past week that have caused widespread unease across the city. Police said the two men, aged 38 and 50, 
were arrested this week in a joint operation with customs officers who raided their homes and offices and found copies of the comic books that allegedly incited hatred or contempt against the Chinese and Hong Kong governments and the judiciary. Hong Kong media reported the arrests this week, citing a press release. This is VOA News.
please subscribe, like, or comment. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon.